the Lord of all waters. Poseidon was a Greek god, as unruly as the seas he commanded, constantly meddling in the affairs of mortals, and once challenged Zeus himself. Poseidon was a defiant god whose power was second only to that of Zeus. Although he was chiefly known as god of the sea and seafarers, his power extended to other domains as well, befitting one called deep-sounding earth shaker and circler of the earth and black maned. Poseidon controlled earthquakes and was associated with horses and horsemanship as well. In some sources he was even referred to as Hippios, meaning horse lord. Worshipped across the entirety of the Greek world, Poseidon had particularly strong followership in seafaring city-states such as Athens and Corinth. Poseidon was an unruly as the seas he was fought to control. An instigator, a firebrand, and a rebel, Poseidon figures prominently in Greek mythology thanks to his resistance of Zeus's control over the Pantheon. He was also well known for his disruptive influence over human affairs in Homeric epics, the Iliad and the Odyssey. Stories of Poseidon projected the illusion of control onto the one domain that the Greeks could never fully master, the sea. Carl Jung argued that psychic activity transcended the brain. In alchemy, Jung found that plain water or sea water corresponded to his concept of the collective unconscious. One of the future videos will cover the symbolism of water and what it represented from west to east. When it comes to etymology, the name Poseidon had roots in two distinct words. The first of these was the Greek word posis itself derived from the Proto-Indo-European root potis. Both words meant husband, lord or master. Some uncertainty surrounded the second of Poseidon's linguistic origins. The better accepted interpretation held that it comes from the root da, meaning earth or land, which would make Poseidon translate to the lord of the earth, or perhaps even husband of the earth. This latter translation indicated an association with the earth goddess Demeter. Indeed, the oldest Mycenaean Greeks referred to Poseidon pointed to an intimate, though imprecise relationship with Demeter and possibly Persephone. The second interpretation suggested a link to the word Davon, or water, which would make Poseidon translate to Lord of the Waters. This was an attractive translation as it linked Poseidon's name with the sea. This association was misleading, however, as none of the early Mycenaean references to Poseidon indicated the god held any associations with ocean, water or sea. When it comes to family, in the fullness of his manhood Poseidon wed Amphritite, one of the nymphs known as the Nereids, and a figure long associated with the sea. Together they had three children, Triton, the messenger god of the sea, Vephensitimi, and Rhodos, the patron goddess of Rhodes and future wife of Helios. Like other male deities, Poseidon was celebrated for his many infidelities and violent sexual conquests. Among his numerous illegitimate offsprings were some of the most legendary figures in Greek mythology. With his mother Gaia, he sired the giant Antaeus, who did battle with Hercules during the Twelve Labors and Charybdis, a sea monster that lurked in the Straits of Messina and formed massive, relentless whirlpools to suck in the unexpected travelers. He also reproduced with Aphrodite and her sister Demeter. He sired two children, with the latter including a small speaking horse named Arion. Poseidon also raped the Gorgon Medusa in the temple of Tina. The union was ultimately responsible for the birth of Pegasus, the famous winged horse who eventually burst from Medusa's neck after Perseus looped off her head. According to Ovid, Poseidon's rape of Medusa so enraged the lovely maiden that serpents grew from her head, making her hideous to behold. In addition to goddesses, Poseidon courted nymphs such as Tusa, who gave birth to the first song Cyclops known as Polypemus. He also saw the pleasures of mortal women such as Euryale, the daughter of King Minos and mother of the huntsman Orion. When it comes to mythology, a central element of the Poseidon mythos was the gods' involvement in plots to undermine the established orders both human or divine. The older story, retold in regrettably brief detail in the Iliad, even featured Poseidon leading a plot to overthrow Zeus. In this tale, Poseidon, Athena, Apollo and Hera conspired to trick Zeus into his throne and fasten him there. 
Zeus was saved only by the vigilance of Thetis, the sea nymph, who summoned Briaeus, one of the monstrous one-hundred-handed creatures. These creatures were the same beings responsible for the Olympian pantheon's victory over the titans and the giants in the Titanomachy, and could easily handle anything the rebellious gods could throw at them. As punishment, Zeus stripped the rebellious deities of their divine rights and sent them to run errands on earth. Among these errands was the humiliating task of serving Laodemon, king of Troy and father of Priam, who ordered the disgraced gods to build walls among the great city. When period of service came to an end, he sent a monstrous sea creature to harass Troy. The creature baited Hercules into action, and therefore Lang the great hero slew the beast, leaving Poseidon to take his revenge another day. When it comes to the origin, along with his brothers and sisters Hestia, Demeter, Hades, Hera and Zeus, Poseidon was born of the union between Rhea and Cronus, titans who ruled the universe before the rise of the Olympian pantheon. When he discovered that one of his children was destined to overthrow him, Cronus swallowed Poseidon and his other children. Eventually mighty Zeus bested the titan and forced him to regurgitate the children, including Poseidon. When they bested the titans, Zeus and his brothers Hades and Poseidon, being male and thus privileged to rule in Greek society, assumed control of the cosmos and divided it up into various domains. The brothers drew lots at random, and with his draw Poseidon gained control of the seas as well as all waters. Poseidon and the Homeric Epics Poseidon's rage over the affair involving Laodemon had enormous influence over the course of the Trojan War, as told by Homer in the Iliad. When war broke out, Poseidon threw his considerable might behind the Achaeans, the coalition of Greeks who sailed forth to crush Troy. Like the other gods who meddled in the Trojan conflict, Poseidon's assistance came mostly in the form of moral support. At a critical moment in the battle when the Achaeans seemed near defeat at the hands of the attacking Trojans, Poseidon raced to the battlefield and assumed the form of the prophet Calchas. He did so in order to avoid the detection of Zeus, who had ordered the gods to stay out of the affair. Poseidon's efforts to help the Achaeans were rendered beautifully in the Iliad. Suddenly down from the mountain's rocky crags, Poseidon stormed with giant lightning strides, and looming peaks and tall timber quaked beneath his immortal feet as the sea lord surged on. Down Poseidon drove and yoked his bronze hoofed horses onto his battle car, his pair that raised the wind. With their golden manes streaming behind them and strapping the golden armor around his body, seized his whip that coils lit and gold, and boarded the chariot launching up and out. Skimming the waves and over the swells they came, dolphins leaving their lairs to support across his wake, leaping left and right, while they knew their lord, and the sea haved with joy, cleaving a path for him, and the team flew on in Poseidon's desperate intervention quelled the fearful hearts of the Achaeans. He also rallied the spirits of the great warriors, like Ajax and Ajax the Great, who mounted the defense that repelled Hector's assault. While Poseidon's heroic efforts won the day, the Achaeans still suffered tremendous losses that threatened their collective resolve. Even the mighty Agamemnon was shaken. He proposed a retreat so that the Achaeans might regain their strength. Once again, Poseidon intervened this time with the help from Hera, who distracted Zeus with her feminine charms and lured him into a deep slumber. Seizing the moment, Poseidon revealed himself and led his troops in a terrific assault that left Hector wounded and the Achaeans ascendant. Zeus finally awoke to the sound of Poseidon bellowing in fury from the battlefield. He ordered the disobedient sea god to retreat from the battle immediately. Poseidon conceded, not out of fear for Zeus, he assured the other gods, but because of his enormous respect for the father of Olympus. Poseidon in the Odyssey After Troy had been brought to reign, Poseidon focused his seemingly inexhaustible rage on Odysseus, the great hero whose long journey home was immortalized in the Odyssey. 
Though Odysseus had fought on the side of the Achaeans, he and his crew happened to land on an island inhabited by Polypemus, a cyclops and son of Poseidon. When Polypemus began eating members of the crew, Odysseus and his few remaining men devised a plan to blind the creature. Using great cunning, they tricked the massive creature into drinking himself into a stupor and blinded him when he was inebriated. While the act allowed Odysseus and the others to escape from the Cyclops' clutches, it also earned them the wrath of Poseidon, a god more than capable of waylaying Odysseus on his voyage home. Truly, there will be no Odyssey without Poseidon. At one point, Poseidon sent a storm to shipwreck Odysseus as he was leaving the island of Calypso. The sea god would later lure Odysseus into rage of his child, the maelstrom producing sea master Charybdis. According to Eric Newman, Poseidon was the emissary of the archetypal Great Mother, whose destructive forces pursued the hero archetype through the millennia of mythologies. For more videos like this, be sure to like, share and subscribe. Also, feel free to leave a comment, your opinion is highly valued. Thanks for rebuilding Olympus.